Another good question in the comments that I've had uh, over the last couple of weeks when I've been talking about render resolution sliders uh, in Steam VR is people that are using the Quest 2 are saying, Carl, do I adjust the render resolution slider in Steam VR or do I adjust the render resolution slider in the Oculus software when using the Quest 2 with Oculus Link? This is again, not virtual desktop, Oculus Link. Um, and how does one affect the other? If I put the Oculus software up, does the Steam VR render resolution also go up? Are they independent from one another? How exactly do they work, Carl? What should I be doing? It's all confusing, help. So um, this is what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna answer those questions. I feel like I need to sneeze. So if I sneeze, I apologize. If I don't sneeze, I don't sneeze. Anyway, get your Quest 2, get it plugged in, um, connect the link cable, obviously, uh, and load up the Oculus software. In fact, let's get some screen capture on the go. Yeah, lovely. So, um, got your Oculus software loaded up. Go to the Devices tab, you'll see your Quest 2 there. Click on it, scroll down, under Graphics Preferences. You'll see it already says for me, refresh rate 90 hertz, rendering resolution 5408 by 2736. If we, pardon me, if we click in here, you can see I've got that set to 1.7x. Now, this is what it needs to be set to if you want a one-to-one -one render resolution to native resolution of the panel uh, on your Quest 2. And if you don't know what I mean by that, go check out two of my other videos where I explain how VR is rendered. The resolution you see here, 5408 by 2736, sounds a lot higher than the native resolution of the Quest 2 panel, and it is, but that's what it needs to be um, to actually give you as close to a one-to-one -one rendered image in the middle of our displays as what the native panel in the Quest 2 provides. And I say, it's explained in some other videos, so I won't go into that here. But anyway, 5408 by 2736. If we now load up Steam VR on my other half of the screen here, we'll see that with the slider in Steam VR set to 100%, we see exactly the same resolution. So Steam VR is loaded. I've clicked the little three lines at the top left-hand corner. We come down to settings and I'm on general, and you can see here I've got you've got custom or auto under render resolution. If you leave it to auto, it's supposed to adjust the render resolution based on your performance. So if you haven't got a very strong PC, it will scale the resolution down. If you've got a strong PC, it will scale it up. Um, I've got it set to custom because I like to set this manually. Now 100%, which is what it's at at the moment, 2704 by 2736. This is per eye. If we look back at the Oculus one, it's the full width of the panel. If you divide 5408 in half, um, you get 2704, which is why Steam shows 2704 by 2736 instead of 5408 by 2736. But yes, it's the same resolution combined together. So. As you can see here, Steam at 100% uses whatever you've set it to in the Oculus slider as the 100% setting. If we now go over to the Oculus software and we scale this resolution right back, let's say you can't run it at 1.7, which is what you really wanna do if you can, but we all know most of us can't because our graphics cards aren't good enough. Let's just scale it back to three, 248 by 1648 or, or 1.0 on the rendering resolution. We now need to obviously restart the Oculus software for this effect, uh, for this to take effect. So we'll do that. We also need to exit out of Steam VR because if you don't, then the render resolution doesn't refresh and it stays the same. So what you'll see now when Oculus is loaded up again, and then I'll load Steam VR again. So there's Oculus loaded up. And go down here and have a little look. Yeah, the resolution is obviously where we just chose it to be. 3248 by 1648. Let's fire up Steam VR and look again what the resolution says at 100%. So click on those, go on to settings, and now you'll see the render resolution is 1632 by 1664. Now, it's slightly weird because 1632 isn't half of... 3248, it's very close, it's within about six pixels. And of course, the other, the um, y axis 
1648 and over here it's 1664. So again, you're like 15 pixels or so adrift. I don't know why Steam VR does this. Uh, and yet at, you know, at 1.7 in the Oculus software, which is native, it, it, it does it literally matches it pixel for pixel. But as we scale back a little bit, it just seems to be between four and 16 pixels adrift. Not enough whereby you'd notice or it makes any difference to anything, but it's an interesting observation. But more importantly, what you can see is whatever you set in the Oculus software is what Steam VR now uses as its 100% reference point. So if it were me playing around with games, I would, I would leave Steam VR fixed on 100% and just literally across the board, just like, like you, you can see, I've got it here, custom, 100%. I leave it there the whole time. I don't play around with it. I the only thing I adjust is in the Oculus software, I adjust the render resolution here. Now for my setup with my RTX 2080 and my 3800X, I usually run about 1.2 or 1.3, somewhere around there. I can't run it flat out at 1.7, I just haven't got the power, and most of you guys out there can't either. Um, I know even some of you with 3800s, um, 3800s? With, um, with 3080s are struggling in certain titles, especially sim racing titles, because they're not always the best optimized either. But anyway, getting sidetracked, waffling on. That is how the two different sliders work. The Oculus one tells Steam VR what your 100% render resolution is based on the slider in the Oculus software. And then if you want to adjust the Steam VR one, you're adjusting it from that starting point, which is why I say leave Steam VR at 100%. Don't dick around with it. There's no need to. Put it on 100, close it, forget about it. If you need to drop the render resolution, just do it in the, in the Oculus software. And, and that way it's being done almost at a, like a base level. Uh, and then, you know, you can still tweak things in each game. Um, sim racing, not so much, but other uh, VR titles often have a render slider in game that you can adjust. Um, but yes, for me, my advice, set it in the Oculus software, tweak it there if you need to, um, leave the Steam VR one at 100%. But you don't have to, you could, you could, you could put the, um, the Oculus one at 1.7 and then you could bring the Steam VR slider down to under sample technically if you wanted to it i don't think it really matters too much whether you i don't know though if oculus is saying render uh, i suppose okay i suppose it would affect it this way if you have the oculus software all the way up at 1.7 it means things like your oculus home um and oh yes and non-steam vr games are all gonna yes this is exactly why i did it in fact i'd forgotten about this Obviously, if you play Oculus exclusive titles, there is no Steam VR slider. So what you set in the Oculus software slider is what you're gonna be using. So don't set that to 1.7, unless you, for you, you've got a powerful enough PC and it actually runs. Set it to something sensible that you can actually hold a decent frame rate with and get a good experience because that affects your Oculus games uh, as well as your Steam VR games. Of course, you could go into Steam VR, turn it down in there, but then your Oculus games would still be rendering at 1.7, which is native, um, and, you'd, uh, and you'd struggle to run anything. So yes, that's why I did it. Leave Steam VR 100%, adjust it in the Oculus software. That way your Oculus games will run well, your Steam VR games will run well, and everything will be happy days. Again, please don't in the comments shout at me, Carl, 1.17 is super sampling, it's not native resolution. If you're not sure why that's native resolution, because I know some of you are gonna, are gonna write it anyway, go watch my other videos where I explain about barrel correction, lens distortion, and how it has to be rendered at a higher resolution than what the native of the panel is, and then correct it in shape to give you a roughly one-to-one -one, um, display in the center of the image where you're focusing. But yes, I hope that's been helpful. Felt a little bit disjointed, but I do always do these on the fly without a script, so sometimes they're not gonna flow as well as others. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.